there campers, my name is Paul Hughes, I am the Lord of Leisure, and welcome to another Aftermath video, where basically I've come out of the cinema, and then I come on screen for your dining and dancing pleasure to tell you what it's about, if it's good, bad, or ugly, and indeed, whether or not you just spend your hard-earned cash on it, regardless of whether it's good, bad, or ugly, because, you know, there are some bad films that you may have to see regardless. I mean, the last... Uh, Aftermath video I did was quite some time ago and it was out, obviously out in Leicester Square just after watching Mandy at the Prince Charles Cinema and even now uh, a few weeks later the best I can still describe it is an hour or so of slow weird shit followed by a series of boss battles that you would pretty much find in any video game basically <laughs> along with the occasional weirdness from Nicolas Cage thrown in because well why the fuck not but tonight uh Aftermath video is all about Slaughterhouse Rules! Now, why Slaughterhouse Rules? Well, it Halloween's just been and gone, and this was released just in time for Halloween, so obviously now its relevance uh, in November is pretty much now completely run out the window, as I found when trying to find screenings for it in the first place, there were not that many, so frankly... It looks like it's on a limited release in the United Kingdom, which is kind of a surprise, considering that it is a British film. Now, the plot and the stars. The stars are Michael Sheen as the headmaster, or the bat. Uh, you've got Hermione Caulfield, which you might have seen in an ITV drama or two. Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, well, pretty much, you, they're uh, either, they're, well, Simon Pegg's uh, a teacher obsessed with cricket and a lady who's basically uh, gone off to um, a war zone uh, where she's fallen in love with a lovely doctor and or other things and whatever else. It, it, it's an ongoing subplot of the film. Nick Frost is a protester and finally you've got a few other people uh, who I, I honestly have never seen in, in other stuff so obviously this is the first time I'm seeing them in a film and I can't remember all their names uh, to be perfectly honest now the app uh, the storyline with this and the fact that it's a theme it's a it's a horror comedy that they've sold this for at least that's where I when I first saw the trailer for this uh, when seeing uh, something else at the cinema uh, pretty much I got huge amounts of the theme that they were going for with it was basically Shaun of the Dead set in a very posh British uh, boarding school that's the type of theme I, I got so they were going for that type of horror comedy with this um, now what what actually happens in the film is that a boarding school you know, British boarding school, gets a new uh, member from a free scholarship. Um, and basically, he comes along, he starts getting uh, enveloped and all surrounded by all these house things. You know, you think of it like Harry Potter this stage when you're basically getting sorted into houses and you've got Sparta being the shittest house. And obviously, Sparta gives way to a whole load of Sparta jokes, some of which work, some of which... <laughs> And slowly over time, we see that due to a local fracking operation, which is giving money for the school, because apparently it's got fuck all left, uh, nasty things are about to happen. And this fracking operation, uh, operated by various people who like to play Call of Duty on an Xbox and fart, um, because, you know, methane gas jokes, you can't get enough of them. Uh, pretty much unleash hell upon the earth uh, with these sort of mole type biting motherfuckers that basically will consume anything and uh, there are a few situations where they consume people during shall we say naughty circumstances oh yes it's it is going to be that kind of film and so we see our, our cast uh, come along they they obviously fight through all silliness uh, just with dealing with boarding school rules and you know the <laughs> the smoking area is basically a house on a lake and things like that it, 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 it things are, are taken out of uh, context but one thing I'll have to say be without obviously going to the ending or otherwise uh, with this it is really slow to start with absolutely if you're expecting something which I mean, Shaun of the Dead, when it started out, 
it was it was leading up to something silly going wrong but uh, there were signs of it and, and so on but you were still on board with these two uh, idiots just well getting drunk at the pub and then going home and then obviously you remember you remember you saw the zombie going uh, when they were going you see that just before then they uh, collapsed drunk uh, um, waking up the next day to find that a zombie apocalypse has happened this is a slower burn than that though so in a strange sort of way I think for basically the first 45 50 minutes of the film it's not a long film it's about an hour and a half long um, it's it takes its time getting going it's setting the scene but also potentially taking too long to get to the point where we start seeing the real shit happens. There's a few uh, bits here and there uh, that obviously show that shit's uh, coming, but overall, for the longest time, you're dealing with uh, a lot of people who, frankly, you would just say are twats, and you wouldn't... You, you kind of don't have a huge amount of investment in whether or not they live or die or otherwise. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, frankly, when some of them do die, you basically go, yeah, fair enough. Um, but it's, I could see they, they wanted to do a mixture of uh, jokes with the setup for the private school, obviously with all the uh, silliness that can come with being sorted into houses and people having to do various rituals and then the upper six basically having sex orgies and all the rest of that stuff it's a thing in this film believe it or not and there is uh, one moment where you'll go oh dear well he that that, that that that's not going to be jolly good <laughs> if you're gonna be a fully british about it but once it gets going it sort of picks up a bit of pace where they're being chased by uh, underground mole monsters but it never goes to a stampede it's sort of like a light canter uh, if you will in terms of pacing and it's just sort of in a strange sort of way i could see this have been like an hour program uh, on tv or just like a netflix special or something but a whole film for it i mean it's there were times it felt like it was a slog and uh, probably that goes to the audience that I was uh, watching this with as well because there's one of the things I do actually want to come on to at the end of the, this uh, after the uh, aftermath thoughts are complete. Uh, some A lot of the jokes were sort of, yeah, they were there, they, they wanted to put them out but they just weren't funny. Uh, and also don't think that this is the type of horror film that will have lots and lots and lots of jump scares. It's if there are moments where you think they are supposed to be jump scares but they don't work they i mean i'm a, when it comes to horror i'm an i'm a wuss absolutely i will jump at anything i mean hell there's still even the lead up to gremlins right where just before you see the first gremlins uh, turn up i'm just going uh, uh, and then after that once the gremlins are out then i'm okay I didn't get that at all. I, you know, I I was fine throughout, honestly. But uh, there are the moments where they try and second make your second guess and all the rest of it. But some of it, yeah, you see, you do see coming a mile away. The best bits of the film are are towards the end. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I mean that's in a strange sort of way. If you had that more. Uh, throughout the film and actually some tighter writing maybe and maybe a bigger a budget as well because it, it felt like the reason why it was so slow to begin with is that they had to save the money for the end and therefore they just had to basically go doo -doo 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 -doo. you could see that there were parts where yes they did use special effects and all the rest of it uh, especially for the um, underground bitey animal things um, the, the overall the, the cast were you know that they, they filled their roles quite nicely it was okay uh simon Pegg as the weepy uh, teacher missing uh, his lady who had gone off to the war zone um 
did that joke and everything went a bit too long as well, uh, honestly. And Nick Frost just turned up playing Nick Frost, basically. You, do, you don't expect anything else. Right, who wants to get some drags? You just, it's, it's that type of thing. And he, he was, he was a pointless character. He, I, I, I get obviously with uh, comedy like this, uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost tend to go together, but he really was. Whew. Yeah, it was. Michael Sheen was wasted in this. I mean, he, he tried to be as uh, prim and proper, and obviously, um, as uh, <laughs> shall we say liable to um corruption with being bought out uh, being bought various gifts by terrafrac the company that was fracking nearby uh, the school obviously getting shell gas out of the ground and that in turn uh, started attracting the uh, attracting these mole uh, um, creatures underground via a massive hole blah 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 um you had the telltale sign when they were around because of the gas um if you had a lighter um, the gas start the uh, flame goes green so you go oh they're about yeah better run away yeah um some characters they were just a stereotype there and then once they were gone they've served the purpose yeah fair enough it mean at the end of the day uh i can i actually know i, I can see why the cinemas didn't have many showings for this it, it's the best way i i can describe it it's okay the, the, the laughs, some are there, some definitely don't work. It's it's kind of laboured for uh, the majority of it. And then when it starts getting good, obviously it's not long. And, and even that, it's... It, there, there are a couple of nice moments in it. There are definitely a couple of funny moments uh, in, in it as well. Um, and... Yeah, I, I hope... That the young cast go on to do better things, uh, honestly, because I don't think that they really had much to do, and no one really had much to do. I mean, it was a decent idea. I could see where, yes, uh, it, it could work, but it's just it never went beyond okay. And I got a couple of chuckles out of it, and that's about it. So, slaughterhouse rules. I have a suspicion will come and go and no one will ever remember that it was there it, it, it is it's one of those things that it was okay at best and then slow at worst with some with some bad humor uh, it, uh, that that's that's the best i can say about it unfortunately now one thing i did uh, uh, allude to earlier was about the audience that uh, i was sat with um and this is going to go on a little bit of a rant, so you'll have to forgive me here. This has nothing to do with Slaughterhouse Rules. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Um, but uh, the I get the suspicion that some... Let me put it this way. What's happened to people going to the pictures? Um, the way I, I can only uh, phrase this is that either people are bored, because they have to be on the fucking phone every three seconds in case they missed a facebook uh post or have a running commentary throughout the entire film especially with uh, so, uh someone just going oh jeez but and oh who's that uh, it, it, it you know it, to be perfectly honest whether or not they're just uh, y y young kids or you know mentally ill people i don't know it could be a mixture of it could be both for all for all i know but i i get the suspicion that it's just getting worse going to the cinema now. I mean, this was on an afternoon showing of a film that clearly not many people were going to go and see, but then the people that do turn up to watch it then were just fucking idiots. Um, it's it's not the first time. There's been another, there were plenty of other films. I, I watched The Equalizer Two, where in essence I had an encounter with uh, a, a young gentleman who uh, was, um, well, wanting to beat the shit out of me for telling him to turn his phone off uh, during the film. So that, that, it, it's, I just get the feeling that, in essence, it's getting, it's, it is getting worse going to the cinema now. People incessantly just want to be on their phones, just want to do all sorts of shit, like they were just at home. So then, but they, it, it, 
it just fucking fucking annoyed me and maybe that led on to not enjoying this as much maybe i i in a different light at home where clearly it's just me so if i'm going to annoy anyone it's just going to be me um it, it would be different but I was never so happy to leave the cinema as I was after uh, sla the Slaughterhouse Rule sh uh, showing that I, I went to. And it was, it was, maybe it was a mixture of the film, but also the mixture of the people that were in there. That, for, that they had attention deficit disorder or bored or, you know, just obnoxious, you know? I mean, I know, I've, I've been that way a, a few times in in the in the cinema as well i mean don't get me wrong there there was there are moments at the cinema that i've laughed out loud at bits that should not have been laugh out loud but it was basically bad moments uh, in in certain indie films where i couldn't help myself it, it just it, it came out and yeah but not to do that all the way through the film it was just it was off-putting and maybe maybe that was just me uh that it just the whole thing was just not an enjoyable experience because of that and i'd be very much i would not want to sit through any of that again in fact you know it's it was one of those times where i would just say fuck it i'll just wait until it's out on netflix or otherwise because well then i can enjoy it without any other fucker being in the room do I have to get to that point? Or is this just me getting old, uh, maybe? And I'm not hip and down with uh, the people who have to be on uh, Instagram and all the rest of it every three seconds. I, 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 and, well, talking bollocks. I mean, I'm talking bollocks here right now to you, all of you. But obviously, again, that's at home. You've made the choice to watch this. And therefore, you know, ha ha! It, it is a definitely a different thing. Uh, so yeah, that kind of contributed to not enjoying this at all, actually. So maybe a combination of uh, things uh, arrived at this. But would I recommend anyone going to watch Slaughterhouse Rules? Nah. It, it it can be caught at a later time. Maybe on a again on a Sunday afternoon. What are you doing? You're riding. <laughs> there you go. Uh, or, or something like that when it, it's inevitably on Amazon or Netflix or otherwise because it wasn't it wasn't that scary it wasn't it wasn't that funny it dragged it yeah maybe in a different time in a different place it would be okay but slaughterhouse rules it will definitely come and it will definitely go and no one will remember it honestly well, there you go, campers. That's an aftermath video and a half, isn't it? I'm going to go for a lie down and possibly also play Diablo 3 on the Nintendo Switch because, you know, portable, uh, you know, hacky slashy of demons. What's not to love? And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to watch uh, an idiot uh, speak complete gibberish to a webcam on the internet. And uh, hopefully I will see you all again very soon. But until then, campers, cheerio!